Hello Targa, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it's time for another Orc Mode workout, and today was Max Effort Bench Press Day. You guys know the rules. Before you watch the PR attempt, the max attempt, you have to click like down below. We have to keep the likes higher than the dislikes. We don't always successfully do that every day, and only you guys can do that. So before you watch it, please click like, and then we'll get into today's training, the methodology used, what we did for supplemental work, and why. Uh, pretty long workout today. But today I decided to go a little lighter with the chains. I've been doing a lot of really heavy chain and band, and I'm like, well, I do need to get the bar weight well up past 300 again. Let me just throw on 43 pounds of chains and see if we can maybe work it up a little bit from there, right? But I wanted to get a nice, good, good lift. Um... When I got to 305, it felt a little heavy. Interestingly enough, with the pause on the chest with this particular grip, and yes, there are things I'm trying to work on with the way I grip the bar. It's still not perfect. Uh, I really, really have a lot I need to improve there. But that's kind of a separate topic. Uh, I did feel more chest than usual. Now, I did feel a lot of shoulder. My left shoulder felt a little clicky. And that always bothers me, and I definitely noticed it on some of the supplemental work. Uh, and I just have to be aware that there's a reason I can't wide grip bench. And to me, this is wide. Guys are like, you're in, evenly between the knurling and the rings. That's a closed grip. Well, to me, this is getting pretty wide. It is technically a closed grip there. But uh, I do get good strength there. So I have to watch that shoulder. And I'm actually doing a lot of mobility work. I'm actually doing mobility work at like 5 a.m. for my shoulders every day. Problem is, I forgot to do it today. I got tied up, had to deal with a client in Skype early this morning after filming, and then jumped straight to my training. Totally forgot to do it, and a single day of not doing that, I did notice a little bit of a difference. Because for me, shoulder health is everything. I know that if I, I don't keep my shoulders healthy, uh, my bench is not going to improve. All right, we have to work on that. But, happy with that lift. I mean, it was a little slow at the lockout, but due to the change, everything else, because I think, what are we doing? Like, what, 358 at the lockout? And we know my bench is weak. I know, guys. I know, compared to my squat and my deadlift, my bench is ridiculously low. But I'm working on it. We're working on all the supplemental work. We're working on benching heavy, working on the way I grip the bar, bar pass, everything. We're trying to improve everything. Uh, but essentially, I have a lot of muscles that need to be built up for my bench to go up. There are muscles in my upper body that need to be built up. Okay, I accept that. Because I did way too much minimalist training in the last couple years for upper body. And as I've come to tell you guys later, minimalist training is amazing for novice lifters. It's amazing for novice lifters. It's not good for everybody else. But, you know, I did it for different reasons. Uh, but, you know, we've had to work on it the last year. Now, technically, with that chain weight, that is a PR. By the way, for those curious. Uh, that is a 10 pound PR with that chain weight. But we've got a long way to go because that needs to turn into another 10. And another 10. For my bench to be where it needs to be, I'm going to need to PR that 20 more pounds with that same chain weight. So it's going to be a matter of getting technique dialed in, making sure my shoulders stay healthy, but largely building up all the support musculature. Now, built a lot of pec there, so I'm glad I'm doing floor press right now. So feel like delts are a weak link. Biggest wing clean in my benching. These felt awkward today. I struggled with floor press today. They pro they look better on camera than they felt. I'm probably looking at them going, I don't know, they seem to look pretty good. And now, man, they just felt awkward. Um, I really felt with, with getting my hands in a good position. Like I said, I've got to work on my grip more. And sometimes when I get the grip kind of where I want it with the bench, when I get over to even volume work like this, my wrist starts cocking back. Now, does that mean I've got weak forearms and wrists? Yeah, that's why we're one of the reasons we're doing tons and tons of forearm and wrist work and grip work and all that stuff. It'll improve my bench by allowing me to keep a better hand position and therefore not bleeding energy, right? Getting a, a, a better bar path. Because that matters. I, I bleed a lot of energy on my bench. I have long arms already, right? That doesn't help. So stuff that has to be fixed. And you know, these are these would are easy to fix when you're weak. Okay, if you have a 200 bench, these problems can be fixed in a few weeks. When you're up past 300 and you're working on stuff like this, it takes a while because I've got to put meat on my forearms. Now I'm noticing when I look at certain angles of checking the mirror other stuff, my forearms are actually growing. I am starting to see a difference. 
Now, on these angles, it doesn't look like it, but I think people have to understand how wide my back and legs and everything are, so it makes a lot of stuff look smaller <laughs> when you see all of me. But they are growing, but I'm going to have to be very, very consistent. Um, all, all these weak links, I'm going to have to just keep hitting them. I've got to be consistent. We did microplate that up, though. If you guys looked, it was up. So it was 232 and a half for 3 by 10. Um, but mainly it only felt awkward because of the uh, my hand. I really felt like with my left hand trying to keep keep it the knuckles up and not cocking back was really, really awkward on those. And once it cocks back, it totally changes your bar path. But still hit all the primary movers. It was good work, good amount of weight. Because again, I bumped the weight two and a half pounds for sets of 10. Because I got an 11th rep on the final set last time. So we just have to keep getting strong at that. And I'm going to have to keep doing all the grip and wrist work. I'm going to have to keep doing it for a very, very, very long time, probably indefinitely, because I have thin forearm bones. People have noted that, I have a few guys note that, they're like, you got small wrists. I'm like, yeah, I kind of do. Got long arms and thin arm bones. Makes certain things more difficult to deal with it. Uh, Incline, though, I did felt my shoulder start clicking a little bit, my left shoulder. So I stopped it at four sets instead of trying for a fifth. But, again, we got 12 plus reps on all of these, uh, which is kind of where I want to be. Managed to squeeze out at least 12, so it took a little bit of rest pausing. But we're kind of in that volume range that we want. But as far as my supplemental pressing goes, I did hit a max. And people have to remember that counts towards your volume. Uh, we go to these different ideas, and when I say that you don't get a lot of hypertrophy from heavy singles, I don't mean that they don't recruit fibers and it doesn't contribute downstream to <laughs> how fibers get fatigued. Okay, it does matter. If you've hit upper threshold fibers on a max, those upper threshold fibers are now fatigued a little bit. When you're doing your other volume work, you have to keep that in mind. It does change the nature of the volume and the fatigue of those fibers later. So it, it is part of your overall volume. But three by 10 for challenging sets on the floor press, four sets of 12 plus, some of them are around 13. 12 to 13, all pretty much limit sets for me. Uh, with the axle bar inclines, a pretty good amount of pressing volume. Now, if I only did this once a week, it would be a hair short. wouldn't be quite enough. But if we count the max as a work set and then all these other sets as a work set, it's about eight good work sets. About eight good work sets, seven of which are high, high rep. That's within our minimum effective volume. So we're good there. Again, but I'm going to do it again in 48 hours. So we have pretty high frequency with that minimal effective volume. But then after that, we do all the, the higher volume stuff. Uh, we go to all the delt and tricep work. My delts are my weak link. We know that. We're trying to bring them up. And again, my, my shoulder one angle mobility issues probably contribute. Because that's the thing that some people have noted. Like when you squat, your shoulder mo mobility is great. When I overhead press, my shoulder mobility is horrible. So I have great range of motion and mobility at certain angles because I've worked on it. Uh, but that one angle is difficult. And again, we come over to that point of I'm not sure how much of it is structural and if it will never be improved. Or if I can improve it. So I'm working on improving it. Uh, with some exercises, and we'll see if that helps. But just some of these angles, it probably contributes. Because ultimately, if we have lagging muscles, there's reasons for it. We might have actual movement or structural issues that make them lag. It's not just a matter of training. Although in my case, the lack of high volume training from my delts for my entire life has probably contributed. I'm gonna say 99% chance it's contributed significantly. But you combine that with at least a one direction mobility issue that could be affecting that interior head. Yeah, it's a possibility. So let's, we'll work on everything. It's all we can do. We fix everything from every angle that we can. Uh, I got some definite rep PRs on these today. I think this first set was around 23. I've been doing about 20 to failure. And I probably got like 19 on my hardest set. So again, Bringing that volume up, which is fine. Until I can get above that, I won't increase the weight again. I'll let it go a little higher. Volume's volume. 
but again hitting this angle that really really lets me hit that middle head of the delt which is is very underdeveloped for me all things considered so we need to make sure we work it we work it hard and consistently but we're doing five sets of these every upper body day which is every 48 hours that's a minimum of 15 sets a week okay. if you can't get your side delt to grow with 15 sets of high reps close to failure or to failure every week they're, they're not going to grow but i'm getting stronger at these right so getting a little bit stronger a little bit stronger so if you're getting more reps with the same weight on a small movement like this you're consistently you're probably growing it's just going to be slow guys it's going to take time got to put in that work consistently week after week after week it's going to be month after month i mean as i said before i feel like out of all my goals my bench press is going to be the hardest to hit and that's the funny thing is that my final bench press goal is technically for this year is considered to be a lower level of strength than my squat and deadlift goal and even then though i feel like it's, it's going to be the slowest that's why we, we have entire days dedicated to benching and bench accessories all right it gets it gets more frequency really we're putting more work into this because we do all the back work and stuff on squat and deadlift days so these end up turning into pressing and shoulder days because it needs it right it needs it so something like half of my weekly training is geared towards benching. The other half is geared towards squat and deadlift muscles. And some of that's even supplemental work for the bench. But the delts have got to come up. The forearms have got to come up. And the forearm training is pretty much every day other than the day before a deadlift day. So we won't do any real forearm work today because i got a deadlift tomorrow. It's the only time I take off from it. So it's basically three out of four days every week. We, we do something that helps the forearms grip. And I think that'll sort, as I've said before, that'll sort the benching out quite a bit. And just my general strength. Thicker, stronger forearms are never going to be of detriment to you as an athlete. Okay. In any sort of strength sport. That is never going to hurt you. So we've got to keep working at it. Uh, now, after this, I did my band press down. And I did four sets today. Like, let me go ahead and take them on out. Is it because triceps are a weak link? No, my triceps don't seem to be bothering me at all. My triceps don't even get fatigued right now on heavy presses. I don't feel them on the floor press. I don't feel them on the max presses, even with chains or bands, because they're not a weak link. So, what does that mean? Let's work on work capacity. Since the triceps are not a strength weak link, let's just work on size, work capacity, getting those tendons strong because this will build and hypertrophy the tendons okay it'll get the muscle bigger so that's what I'm going to do work on this now will it carry over to the benching and bench strength sure especially the fast nature of it yeah it'll help me lock lock a bench faster it'll probably prevent if I keep doing all this stuff it'll prevent my triceps from becoming a weak link it'll help stave off any possible tendonitis in the elbows right because this is a, a prehab and rehab exercise for that so let's just do that i'm going to do tons of this now that my triceps are not a strength weak link in my bench it's not to say stronger triceps wouldn't help they just don't seem to be my biggest limit it seems to be delts first of all and maybe pec second at this point possibly a little bit of pec because the pecs works really heavy on that bench i don't think they're the limit though because i don't slow uh anywhere near the bottom the delts are definitely the weak link. But we're getting good pec work. Getting good pec work at the floor press. Tons of delt work from multiple angles and rep ranges. So we just work on this for triceps. All right? It'll probably it'll make my arms grow. Build the work capacity of my triceps, improve their recovery, and strengthen those tendons up. So I did four sets of it today. Uh, lit my triceps up. A lot of volume. But overall, good workout. Like I said, the shoulder was clicking a little. I've got to do all my stuff for my shoulder here in a bit. I'll do it after. Uh, but it needs to be done today. My fault for forgetting it this morning. I got tied up. No excuses, though. But a good workout. So I hope it has been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.